Andre Poo, aka Silk. Salute to Blake the Great, the homie Mass G, and Don Juan 25 for this request. I honestly didn't think much of this guy's game back then, mainly because he didn't really do anything that jumped off the page in my eyes, but after sitting and researching him, I can see why you guys feel the way you do about him. A solid player that actually had game. Let's get into why I think his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth, Ash Gediman. Poole is an East Baltimore native that came up in a time when street ball was on fire. To this day, people don't give street ball the credit it deserves. And I wonder why, man. I've gotten a lot of comments that says these guys couldn't hold a candle to real ball players. And honestly, I expected that. But what I didn't think would transpire before diving into this street ball pool, no pun, was the lack of respect for one, the game, and two, the work it takes to be great at anything. We have to start giving respect where it's due, or the future generation will have no idea the greatness the basketball world has seen. Maybe not at the level of the NBA, but the streets needs a voice too. No matter what you think of these guys, you gotta show love for the dedication and will it takes to get off your ass, line up for hours, compete against the hand one guys, and finally get invited to join the team. Obviously, someone somewhere saw something amazing in you, and I see that as well. I'm amazed at the things guys like Hot Sauce did, the things Escalade Big Ass was able to do, Baby Shaq, Ayo, Alamo, Main Event, Silk. These guys were such an important part of my childhood, and all I intend to do is share that with you. No, they weren't the best real ball players, but they were the best at what they did. And Silk was definitely a name that rings bells in the street ball world. Put some respect on these guys' name, man. Stunt number one, grandma makes the best pot pie. For those of you that's lucky enough to have your grandmother in your life, you know how special that was. You know that grandma would do anything for her grandbabies. Slip you an extra 20, let you sip the wine when moms ain't looking, or open the back sliding door at 2 a.m. when you just came back from Shorty House and are high off your ass. Grandma was special, and for Andre, his meant the entire world to him. Poole was a star in high school from 91 to 95 and became one of the city's top five scorers. He averaged 23 points, 9 assists, and 6 rebounds, and 3 steals a game. He also became Patterson's first player to go to the East vs. West City All-Star Game, where he was named Most Valuable Player, finishing with 32 points and 5 assists. He was being recruited by schools like Xavier and Georgetown. But with his grandmother falling ill, Poole decided to stay home and take care of her. A decision that would affect his basketball life tremendously. But one, you gotta tip your hat to him for, because many of us would not have done the same. That decision changed his future forever. Could you imagine Silk at Georgetown playing the two with Allen Iverson? Would have been super fun to watch. Instead, he would apply to a local JUCO where he could still ball and help his sick granny. Stunt number two, a lost generation. I could literally use this reason for every single street baller that came up in the 90s or the early 2000s. The way basketball is today is just not how it was back then. Getting to the NBA just wasn't a thing that was as laid out as it is now. Pretty much get ballers life to feature you, create a social media following by rolling your shorts up so high that you now look like a full blown biatch, start blogging for Mars is Real or body bag someone and you pretty much made it. Stay the course with school, go on to average 15 to 16 points at least in college, and you'll be a first round pick. In the 90s, it was much harder. But the thing was that there weren't many people that came back and showed you how to do it, especially street ball. They had Ray for Austin, but honestly, he didn't do much for street ball after he made it. You didn't see him helping these guys get into good schools or promoting their games as something special that people needed to see. That generation that still came up in were pretty much left to fend for self. And many, to most, to almost all, nah, f*** that. All of them were casualties except for Skip. That's crazy to me. No one told Silk that going to a JUCO was not going to amount to anything. 
No one told him to use and one as a platform instead of letting it use him, using its violating moves and showboating. He should have been out there playing real hoop and using that footage to get into a good school. But with no one to help you see that, you remain lost. They all were, and it's a travesty. Stunt number three, at the end of the day. When it's all said and done, the NBA is looking for a guy that has figured it out by 18 and has a name they can market or a game that's undeniable. They don't care that your granny was sick. They don't care that Rafer Austin didn't look out for you. They don't care that you had a son early and have to look after him. They want a guy they can make money off. And at the end of the day, Silk just wasn't that guy. He was a street baller, didn't play at a big school like Skip did, wasn't off the charts good, and was past his marketable prime. Also, at the end of the day, you have to understand that it's all good. He didn't need to be. He's a name that's known across the streets as one of the shining gems of streetball and a guy that made it to a level many would appreciate. Although he never made it big, I for one definitely will be dropping my roses by for everything he meant to the sport I love. Salute to him, man. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. I'm out.